Hi everybody, this is Carol Hill. Today is May 8th, 2017, and we're going to talk about the new release of web indexing on FamilySearch.org. For those of you who don't know anything about indexing, did you know that FamilySearch digitizes over 2 million records every single day? And what that means is that they take a picture of really old records and so that they're available online. The only problem is, is that to make those searchable, they need people to index those so that they can be searchable once they're digitized. So what we're going to do is show you how you can help with indexing if it's something that you would like to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to FamilySearch.org and I like to use the Chrome browser because that is what Family Search um, programs in. So I would use Google Chrome as my browser. And you will go to FamilySearch.org. And then the, the fourth tab over in the middle of the page is Indexing. So you will just click there on Indexing. When you come to Indexing, you will be first on this overview page. And you can get started here. Just take a look at that. and get started and learn more about it. And then you can also here find projects. So you can find projects. I'll click on that really quick. You can find projects in different countries if you click there. If you want to do a specific country, you can click on that country and find the project that you would like to work on. Let's go back to that overview page. You can also on this same page get a guided tour that you can try out right there. You can also get help. So if if you need any of those, just know that's on the overview page. But what we're going to do is just go ahead and get started because it's really easy um, and, it's, and it's brand new. It just came out last week. So you click on the web indexing over on the left hand side and what this will do is it will ask you to sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. If you don't have an account, All you have to do is click on this free account and there's no glitches. You can just have a free account if you would like to do this. So, so but first they'd like you to sign in. I think just so they can keep track of who's indexing and how it's going and everything. So right here when you come in, you can on this left hand side go ahead and take that tour too. And what this is is just an example of the indexing. So it's really great to get your feet wet so to speak. And, and check it out, it's super easy. And then this will be different batches below. You know, that they, they give you like, what, I guess four options. And over here underneath each batch, you'll see the language it's in and then the level. So this is a beginning level, um, the next one's beginning, and then there's a couple intermediate. And as you can see, there's um, US, Scotland, South Africa, there's, there's all over the world and so, um, many, many records <laughs> that need to be first digitized and then indexed. So, and then on this right-hand side, just so you know, there's just some different messages that, that you may want to look through if you need help with that. So, but let's go ahead and click on this U.S. Massachusetts Muster Rolls of the, Mer of the Revolutionary War. So, let's open a batch, and I'll explain this a little bit. Now, each um, record set's going to be different. These are the muster rolls. And let's see, I wanted to first show you that there's these project instructions. So these are really helpful. And you'll also learn doing these um, indexing, you're going to learn a little bit about different records that have been, you know, recorded over history. It's pretty amazing. I'm just going to move that because it's down here by this feedback button, which you can always give some feedback. So first, let's just look at the project instructions for these muster rolls of the Revolutionary War. It tells you a little bit about it. And then there's how there's going to be a variety of documents. So you can just come down here and look at this. What muster rolls are is they're just an inventory of officers and enlisted men in a military unit. And so um, as you can see, there's there's these different documents. You're going to find alarm rolls, muster rolls, muster and payrolls, company returns, order order for 
bounty coat, which I don't know what that is. I'd have to look that up. I can always Google it. Descriptive list, summary of records, list of men mustered, pay abstracts. So, so they filled these out um, when they were going to get paid. You know, there's a muster and payroll, um, muster roll, just, just various ones. And there wouldn't be, you know, when someone served in the Army, they would probably fill out several of these. So... So well, that just tells you about it. It also tells you, if you just keep coming down, um, how to index it. You know, for instance, here this says if it's an alias name, if it says it's Jack, James or Jack, or Ferguson or Ferguson, it tells you how to just index those. And so there's a lot of helps. Um, if you have questions, there's so many helps on this. So that's the project instructions. I'm gonna go ahead and just close that, and if you need to, at any time when you're indexing there, it's always going to be down here underneath the bottom. So what this is, is there is, as you can see at the bottom here, well, and at the top it says there's image 1 of 10, and down here at the bottom you can see those images along the bottom, that you're going to be indexing those 10 images. And um, as you see, it, it is going to be pretty easy. So, and I wanted to just mention too, there are these other um, up here at the top, there's these different options for submitting the batch and marking things blank. And these are from the old indexing program. So things that you might need, but I'm not going to go over those today. I'm just going to go and, and get you started so that you can see how easy it is to do. Okay, so first off, what you're going to do is you're going to identify all the images and should they be in, indexed. So you're going to look at these um, and tell, tell the program if they need to be indexed. And there is, right here, the default is yes, you see on this left-hand side. And then there's this drop-down. You can say no, it's a duplicate image, or no, there's no extractable data. So that would mean if there's not like a name or a date or anything like that, that there wouldn't be any data to extract. So before we go through these images to decide whether they should be indexed or not, Let's just show you these tools right here in case you need to use those, because these are great. If you want to zoom in, you can just click this plus, which is pretty, you know, you pro probably most everybody knows about that, but that's what that plus is for, is to zoom in. And then you can also, I can use my mouse and drag this around, which I love this, because then I can get it close, because this is where you're going to be indexing on the left-hand side. You can also zoom it back out. You can also, this little option gives you some tools if it's not, if you know, if it needs to be turned one way or the other. You can also adjust the image. This is awesome because if this image looks a little bit too dark, you can adjust it to make it darker or brighter. See how bright that gets? So you can adjust that image, which I think I like that a little bit brighter. You can also do the contrast too, and I like that a little bit brighter, and then just apply that, and then it'll stay brighter like that. And also on this, this tool too, you can invert it. So if you'd rather see it as a negative, you can invert it. And sometimes you can read it better like that. So just know that those options are there in case you want to change some things. I was just going to invert that back. Let me cancel that. Okay, I'm just playing too much with these buttons. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and invert that back to the original, but, but really however you prefer is great. And then one other option on this tool is that you can actually, this bottom one, if you're having a hard time maybe reading, this is George, Blan George Blanchard, if you're having a hard time reading that, you could compare it to See, I don't know if you can see down here on the bottom, you can compare it to, this is image two in this record set, and you can um, zoom this one in too, and just compare it to make sure that that looks like Blanchard. You know, maybe it looks like an O, O-R-D, and then you can even compare it with any of them. Because this will typically, you know, it might be the same person. This one actually is a Hezekiah Blanchard, but they did them in alphabetical order, and so you could see if this, you know, just, just to check the words and stuff if you need to do that. So just know that that's there, that you can compare with with the next one because sometimes it's hard to read, right? Okay, so let's get back over here to the indexing. I hope that explains those that. So it'll, um, so you can go ahead and say, hey, yeah, the, that you should index that and put the next. And then another option I wanted to show you too on each of these little um, 
indexing boxes, there's a little question mark right up here that tells you, you know, what if you should leave it as yes or if you shouldn't extract it or duplicate it. So every time you index, there's that that comes up. So let's go ahead and um, go through these 10 just really quick. There's a name there, so yes, I would do that, and there's a date. So you would just want to, you know, there's a date there and a name. Again, just keep clicking, and this is really easy. You can just go through this really quick. Typically, I think most of these will be, that you'll need to index those. So just go through those pretty quick. Okay, I wanted to show you, because this is the last one, and when I click Next, okay, so now what we are, is we're back on image one of the 10. This is that George Blanchard we started with. And then this is gonna have you start indexing. So first off it says to do the given names. So that would be a first or a middle name too. And so I'm gonna type in George. Surname is Blanchard, B-L-A-N-C-H-A-R-D. Enlistment age. Okay, so now it's asking me for the enlistment age. And let's see. What you need to do on that is, I'm going to go ahead and zoom that in a little bit and just see if I see anything about an enlistment age. And I don't see his age at all. And so what you're going to do is, I don't know, should I leave that blank or what should I do on that? So if I click this little question mark, it'll say if age is not recorded, then do control B to mark the field blank. So I'm gonna go ahead and do control B. There's also up here, mark the field as blank, so you can actually push that button too. Okay, so military rank, does it give me his military rank on this one? Looks like this is a payroll. I don't see the military rank on it. Oh yes, I do. Right up here, appears with the rank of private. So I would just type in private there. Okay, so the event month. Okay, so this one I did have to check. So um, let me show you that. It looks like the only date I see on here is August 1778. But um, on one that I did, there was a couple dates. So if you're confused, what you need to you know what you need to do is click on that little question mark again, and then it tells you here many of there's sometimes there's a couple of events on each one and so what this does is give you the priority list so if the enlistment dates there you put that you know and so it'll tell you you know in order like what's the most important to date to put on if there's multiple dates so really great i love that that you can just check that really quick right there and once you've done some of these it won't take you very long so i would put the event month as august aug right or I can just click on this drop down. And then on this one, I don't see a day. Yeah, I don't see a day. All I see is a year. So let me see what it what it would tell me on the day. Would I need to just leave that blank? Would I need to put that blank or would I just tab? So it says if a day was not recorded, press control B. So I'm gonna do the control B in there too to just leave that blank. So I'm going to go ahead and X that out. And then the event year I've got is 1778, so I can put that in. Okay, let's see, residence or birth town. Okay, let me see. So there's no, there's nothing else like his residence or the birth town. So let me see if I have to mark that blank or what do I do on that. It says if the birth or residence town was not recorded or was written as a variation of the word unknown, just press the tab to skip that. So, and I don't have any, this also says just to do the tab. So sometimes they want you to put it blank or sometimes it's okay just to skip. So all the rest of these, if you look at it, just says to skip. I don't, it doesn't have the death year or the age or any of that on there. So that would be it for that record. And I would go ahead and push the new record. And then it would go to the next one. I did this a minute ago, and for some reason, it's not going to the second record. So that's a good thing to watch. If it doesn't go to the second image, make sure that you're on the second image down here, and then go ahead and and index that. And so that's it. So that's pretty quick. They set up these um, record sets so they'll take about 20 minutes or so. so. But you can go ahead and just index those. 
But if you don't, if you can't get to it, like if you only can do a couple, what's really nice is you can go ahead and close out or I'm going back on the arrow button and then let me show you because then this will actually show that I've started this and that, um, that the, you know, that I can just come back in after and finish it. So you don't have to finish once you start. You can just come back later. One other thing I wanted to show you is this the find batches. If you want to find a batch at a different level, you can go ahead and click on that find batches and you can do a search here. You can do the difficulty level if you want to do intermediate. You can do the location and the language or the time period and search for that. And then over here too, I wanted to explain. So here's some different batches that you could choose from if you want to choose something different. And there's, um, so the yellow means that, that these are being indexed. The red means there's a review, indexing review. So, so this is a second person coming in, in indexing that. So those are just those different colors if you have any questions about that. So just remember that just try this out. It's super easy. And these other things are just if you need help, you can click on this help resources up here to get more help and it'll, it'll explain and you can ask questions and find answers. So anyway, um, check this out and try it out. And um, if you have questions, let us know and have a great day.